Okay, shalom, shalom. Kwame asa ala. Koholoim la, yahweh, bahashem, yahweh shai, bahashem, rakahakudash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, and that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. Just want to say the water to all the Akim and Akwaf, that's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai to the best of their ability. This is Yahchanan Nawaf. Just coming at you with another quick lesson, praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. Going to be a little quick one, just the one before uh, camp. It says, um, Nike to launch $100 sneaker line after surprise drop in sales send shares plummeting to worst day on record. Right? I mean, the title says it all. <laughs> and these are things that we be praying for, man, for the fall of this place. And staple companies are clearly falling in Esau Edom's kingdom, man. It's not what it used to be. The music is off. The movies are off. You know, um, relationships are off. <laughs> People not going out to eat. They're not going out, you know, and being entertained like they used to. People are more staying at home. You know, that 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 demic really hit him over the head, you know what I'm saying, and closed down a lot of places, but shit just too expensive, bro. You know, really in reality, people are just taking care of business, paying bills. That's what everybody is getting up to do. Going to work, paying bills. Go home, go to sleep, <laughs> get up, go go and uh, make a little more money, pay some bills. And then a lot of people you know, still on that stay at home shit too, you know, from the um the demic. Um, but let me just get this real quick. Let me read a little bit of the article, but this is the main um, verse that I, I thought of, you know, or, you know, Spirit brought to me when I seen that, that this place is in um, true decline. Ecclesiastes 25 and 7, there be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy. And the tenth I will utter with my tongue, a man that have joy of his children, and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. And this is what we're witnessing. We're witnessing the fall of our enemy. See, they didn't got everything that they can get out of Jake as far as, you know, um, you know, they have your LeBron James, you know, your, you know, your, you, you know, from tennis to whatever, boxing, uh, golf, you know, Nike normally will have all that shit on lockdown as far as like a sponsor. And they spend, you know, billions of dollars pretty much in that in, it, in itself. But they make a lot of money. And with them, you see, they're not used to just, okay. They just want to continue. They think that this place is really just going to continue. What's going on? Our sales are down. Let's put out a cheaper shoe. The motherfucker, the shoes should be cheaper anyway. But they've gone so global with this, this, this bullshit. You know what I'm saying? As far as pretty much people just silly as hell. They're going out buying shoes every week. You know, and Jake is into a lot of that. Going out getting shoes every week. Every, you know, uh, uh you got... 30, 40, 50 pairs of damn shoes in, in, in your closet or your house and you don't even have a car, a proper running car, man. Bills need to be paid. You know, uh, people go out here, man, and they they buy, they used to buy shoes and shit and clothes and shit like that and, and, and won't even pay bills, man. Only bill that they really concerned with paying is that phone bill. That's it. Cell phone bill. Everything else, man, they don't give a shit about because they got to have the phone so they can take selfies and pictures and shit, man. But anyway, this is a real... A real, real decline, man, of this place, man. It says Nike is set to introduce a new line of sneakers priced at 100 or less globally to revive its sales and declining shares. See, they're losing, man. And this is not this is not the only company. This is a, a lot of these major American companies are losing it. Your McDonald's, you know, staple companies, you know, places, you know, that you when you 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 know you 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 think of it as just all American. People are not venturing to these places no more like that, man. It says, according to Rudders, this move is part of Nike's strategy to adjust its product offerings and, re and regain market momentum. That's when you know it's hitting them over the head when they get to talking about that, the, you know, that market, man, that stock, man. In recent years, Nike has raised the prices up its premium sneakers, such as the Air Jordan 1. Who you think going out buying all that shit? See, the Lord is cutting into Jake right now. Jake, the so-called blacks. Hispanics, Native Americans. He's cutting into uh, uh, Jake's finances to the point where, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, Jake Jake not going out here buying all that shit no more. They're not, you know, he, he's cutting into him. It says, which now sells for $200 at some retailers. What the fuck are you, you know, what, what do you need with a $200 shoe, bro? Nike's website sells the high-end Air Force One sneakers for around 150 
In contrast, Adidas offers its popular Samba and Gazelle sneakers for 100 and 100 and 120 dollars respectively. That's still a lot of money for a shoe, though. The announcement comes after Nike shares fell 19.98%. Damn, damn, 20%, bro, on Friday. Shit. Marking the steepest one-day percentage drop in the company's stock history. On Thursday, Nike reported a surprising sales decrease in its later quarter, reflecting the challenges Nike faces from competitors. Nike's new, more affordable sneaker line, and you know, you know, see, this is coming back to haunt them, too, as far as, you know, how fucking racist they are. You know, it's been a lot of stuff that, um, you know, in the backdrop of these people, you know, in their history and stuff. And then I was just talking about that um, with, a, with a, a brother yesterday going off into pretty much the history of Nike. You know, the, the um, that symbol and everything is all fucking, you know, demonic, basically. So this is a good thing right here, man. We we applaud this. We pray for more of these damn businesses to fall. We pray for the whole crumbling and falling of America in general. It's kicking it with a damn Edomite at the job yesterday. He all talking about what we need to do and as a people and we're so divided and this and this. like man not see you well who's divided? Because I ain't ever been a part of you motherfuckers. <laughs> you know, he's talking about how America's gonna come back and Trump is gonna do this. And I'm like, okay, all right man, hey, you mean you not you know <laughs> Said, I hate to bust your bubble, bro, but America's not coming back. Trump is not going to make America great again. I told you, I, <laughs> I had to get it off on him, man. And it was only because he asked me about the debate and shit. You know, like, had he not asked me anything, I wouldn't even gave him an opinion at all. But I know that's not opinion. That's truth, man, because that's coming from the scriptures that America, Babylon, the Great, is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear fire. That shit is inevitable. You're not going to stop World War III. There's nothing you can do. But anyway... Get a little more. It says Knight reported a surprising sales decrease in its later um, latest quarter, reflecting the challenges Knight faces from competitors. Nike's new, more affordable sneaker line is an attempt to attract more customers and boost sales growth, which has slowed due to increasing competition. Now, I ain't, well, that too. <laughs> I guess you know that too. Competition, yeah, could, that could place a part in it. But really, in reality, this 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 thing is over with, man. The company hopes introducing the, these budget-friendly options will help it regain its footing in the market. That's just like, um, who is this out here that's got another $5 meal? So that was pretty much it on the article. You know, bringing back a $5 meal. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, who, you know, you don't know what the hell you're eating if they're offering it to you for 5 bucks. It's best to just go ahead and hit the supermarket, get the best that you can. And, um... And just cook at home, man. <laughs> you know, that's what we tell our follow followers, man. And that's in this truth, man. I don't, you know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with going out. I guess if you want to go out, but I don't see the use in it. You know, I would say, hey, just go. You get a better bang for your buck by just hitting the supermarket, getting what you need, cooking it. And it'll be, at least you know the ingredients that's going into it. You know, you can, you know what's happening at least. You know, we know that we're eating our bread to file among the Gentiles, like the scripture says. But, you know, you have a better chance of you know doing a little bit better man by going to getting fresh ingredients you know um fresh you know if you know the fresher of the vegetables you know um things that you need to just put together you know a nice healthy meal for the family you know i'm on the dolo so i you know it don't take a whole bunch for me but anyway yeah man this this is beautiful right here this is beautiful right here I'm talking about, man, everywhere you go. And when I say shit, expensive. And it's like, it's, it's, I guess it's really the younger generation that's not really catching on, you know. But I mean, because I don't get the, the Uber Eats. And here you go, you're already spending damn near $20 for the combo. Then you got to pay extra for it to be um, shipped to you or, I mean, um, delivered to you and all this other stuff. When, you know. Four damn burger and fries, you know, shit like that. You know, who the fuck is ordering stuff like that when you can just go and to the supermarket, get those ingredients and have enough to feed multiple people and have shit for, you know, another day or so. As opposed to sitting down in one setting, by the time the shit gets to you, the fries is soggy as hell. The damn burger is soggy as hell or whatever it is, man. It's not, it's just not worth it. None of this stuff is worth it no more. The gas is through the roof. 
And so, I mean, it's about to get rough out here, man. This is nothing because once that dollar, once really, you know, people really get, feel the effects of that, that dollar becoming nothing more and more on a day-to-day -day basis, then that's when people are going to really feel the fix of things, man. Like, you know, it's about to get real, real fucked up here. And the people that's at least, you know, that's that's a, that's at least ready for something like that is the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And just Americans in general. But it's going to really hit Jake over the head, man. It's really going to hit Jake over the head. I was kicking with um, somebody yesterday. They was telling me about, you know, a chick, you know, and she she gets four, $1,400 in food stamps every month. But she be selling, you know, the damn food. You know, I'm thinking like, God damn. For, but that's how many kids she got. $1,400 in food stamps, but she's not doing the right thing by it. She's selling that shit. And of course, you know, she's getting cash assistance. And you know, she's getting section eight. So when things break down and, and, and Esau want to implement that MOTB, that market of beauty and the beast, she's going to be up for it. She's going to bring them kids along. I think she's got like five kids or some shit like that. He was saying six kids. She's going to bring them kids because they're going to feel like, well, I have to eat. And they're going to go after Esau for their goods. They're not going to pray to you. How about Shimei was shy, man, for their goods? Matter of fact, let me get um, one more and I'll end out. Head out to camp, man. How about the Zah? Yeah, this is what it's all boiling down to. That Revelation 13, 16, man. That mark of the beauty and the beast. They're going to try, you know, uh, come, they're going to come at you with that. We can relieve your suffering. The scripture says to never trust thine enemy, man. For like his iron rested, so is his wickedness. Because he's going to come. He's going to show you what he's really about once you come in and take the bullshit. This is Isaiah 31 and 1. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many. And in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. They don't seek the Lord. They're not going to seek the Lord. A lot of people are not going to seek the Lord when it straight comes down to it, man. And, you know, we're just praying to you. How about Shemiel shot for mercy and that he will hold us down while we're out here. You know what I'm saying? Hey, because things are going to get rough. Things are not going to be all cozy. You know what I'm saying? You know, might be you just never know where you're going to be at. And it's, that's coming. We got to be ready for that. We have to have a mindset that, OK, it's time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All of us have a lot to play out. And the Lord is going to, you know, help us all with that lot. But, yeah, it's going to get rough, man. You're going to we're going to see things that we never would have thought that we would have ever seen. But that's scriptural, though. So it's not going to catch us off guard because, you know, we we the Lord has given us um, clear insight into it. He's given us foreknowledge into um, the future or what's to come. So that's a beautiful thing, man. So all praises to you. How about Shemia was shot for that? So. <laughs> Damn Esau, man. I'm looking at some shit on TV right here in the backdrop. Esau and supposedly found a wild, uh, I don't know, a fucking wild wolf or some crazy shit they talking about from 44,000 years ago. See, that's the type of shit Esau be on, too. That damn carbon dating. Like, motherfucker, yeah, how you know? And these motherfuckers don't know nothing about No, Come on, bro. Anyway, but that's what they're going to do. They're going to get people with the science. They throw shit on TV and people just believe that shit. Anyway, with that, I pray that the lesson was edifying. Kwame Yashola, a Baba Ball.